it's amazing to see everybody's faces and see the players so committed and so focused and so energized. The girls, they talk about Dig Pink like it's prom. The kids are wearing pink, they're doing raffles and, and raising dollars and they make it a whole experience. I didn't know they were going to take it this far. Everyone wants to participate. Everyone wants to celebrate the lives and the journeys of these women who are fighting breast cancer. And some of these events are so spectacular. Where'd Mark go? Or that you can't help but walk out on a cloud. The lessons we learn on the court are life lessons. It was a, a hill. It was climbing up a hill. You know, everyone said Cinderella story, and that was kind of the big, I guess, the tagline then because it was. I'm just totally honored to have been a part of that team in 2004, that 2004 2005 season. That's me, and this is the article I wrote about our season. It's not easy being Cinderella. My volleyball team did just that for an entire season. But like every good Disney tale, we also had a happy ending. It was like a Cinderella season, but it, but it was more than that, so much more than that. It was a magical season, it was unbelievable. Uh, I think I, I think I said that in, the, in, in our original news interview when we, we talked about it, I just said, I, couldn't, I just can't believe this is even happening. All right. Here we go. Daddy, you're going first. For years, this was his dream, but when Rick Dunnitz finally became a head coach of a high school volleyball team, it was anything but a dream come true. It was a bittersweet season in a lot of ways. I was overwhelmed with as much, all the stuff I had to do. Around the posts, pass. He got this job because the head coach at West Springfield abruptly resigned. His team was in turmoil and losing, and Rick was preoccupied. His mother, who had beaten breast cancer before, had found out it had returned. It blindsided her, and she, uh, she was in a, such a negative place that I wasn't convinced she would even be able to fight this thing. I mean, I was gonna die. That was all I could think. With his team struggling on the court and his mother struggling with cancer, Rick was here in the gym one day when he realized he'd reached his breaking point, and he opened up his heart. And I think the kids were surprised to see a, a 30, 33, 34 year old man uh, get really emotional. He told the girls about his mom. We got emotional also, I mean, we love our coach. He's the best, he's done from, he stepped up when we needed him the most. And the fact that he could step up for us and his mom at the same time just inspired all of us to do the best that we could. The team suddenly had the will to win. It made me work a lot harder because I knew that he was giving it all he had, so I felt I had to do the same. They fought and scraped and beat teams they weren't supposed to. And by winning, the coach's mother, who he convinced to come and watch the games, decided she had the will to win, too. It was just unbelievable. You can see the determination on their faces, you know, they just, oh my God, I never saw anything like it in my life. They were inspirational. So inspirational that the underdog Spartans made it to the district finals. In the history of the school, the girls' volleyball team had never beaten the Robinson Rams. They had never won a district championship. We got on that court and we all just decided, we chose to win. We decided that it was our time. It was our time to be champions. They played their hearts out and won. I actually fell down on my knees and I was like, I cannot believe this is happening. The girls call it their miracle season, a season when they came together to win on the court and they gave this woman all the inspiration she needed to win off it. These are the final moments when they won the district championship. And that's Rick collapsing to his knees. And the coach, Rick Dunnett. After the euphoria and applause faded, Rick thought, what if he could bottle the magic? What if he could replicate what happened? It was an epiphany that led me to the 
idea that if you give kids an opportunity to show their greatness, they will. So Rick started with an outdoor tournament in Northern Virginia. His goals were modest, raise some money for breast cancer research and education. But then the real magic happened. Other coaches caught wind of what was going on and wanted in. Rick met volleyball coaches who had already wrestled with breast cancer. As a coach, our relentless pursuit is you, till the last whistle, you don't give up. We fight. Then there were men's coaches like Fred Chow at George Mason University. His mother is a breast cancer survivor. It's amazing. It's incredible. I remember many years ago when it first started and first getting uh, started to get kicked off the ground. I know we as a men's team participated many years ago and uh, just to see it grow and to see you can't look through any team's photos now and not see a Dig Pink event. He's right, of course, Dig Pink events spread from coast to coast, from small schools to large, from high schools to colleges, to massive tournaments, like the Capitol Hill Classic held every year in Washington, D.C. Pink is spreading like wildfire, from fire trucks to the White House. And it all started with a coach who understood the power of the sport he loves. And it was just a random email to 25,000 volleyball coaches across the country just saying, hey, thinking about doing this thing, you want to be a part of it? <laughs> and we didn't have a name for it, and we didn't know what we were going to do, and we didn't know how we were going to implement it. And the next day, I had a thousand plus emails in my email box saying, that sounds like a great idea, I really want to do it. How do I get started? Right now, you get to do what you love. Downey, show them what you want. Coach Andrea Sims wanted in. The Downey High School coach loves the game. I'm very competitive. <laughs> oh, I definitely want to win. She saw a Dig Pink event as a way to turn a bitter crosstown rivalry with Warren High School into something special. You know, we want to teach them volleyball and skills, but we want to teach them how to make a difference in life. Almost overnight, the rivalry took on a whole new feel. The gym is packed, the feeling is electric. And each year, these young girls raise thousands of dollars for cutting-edge cancer research. They also get the chance to honor breast cancer survivors between games two and three. It's the most amazing community support I've ever seen from every sports team, other schools, both schools, the administration, the superintendent, um, just the entire community has come out and you know, packed this gym pink. It's a big rivalry, but, you know, when push comes to shove, you know, there's a cause here. And what was happening here was being duplicated all across the country. Suddenly, an idea born from a magical season was leading to a magical legacy. When Rick and I woke up one morning and looked at the bank account, and there was $400,000 in there from donations across the country. And, okay, Rick, uh, gee, um, people gave us $400,000. What are we going to do with it? At that point, we realized we can't just keep donating the funds locally. Now it's a national thing. As a coach, Rick knew a little something about huge challenges from that Cinderella season. He also learned a valuable lesson that season. His team was written off. They weren't given a chance. So those were the breast cancer patients he was determined to help. Brian and Rick were like, we're going into the, to the setting which is killing patients. We want to make a difference there first. And that is exactly what our center wanted to do. And we're going to keep fighting uh, for those people who have no solutions, who have no answers. In five minutes, I was like, we're in. You know, we have to work with these guys uh, at, at every level. Rick knew from his time on the bench during that Cinderella season that the impossible is possible with the right team. That became the Side Out Foundation philosophy. It knits together expertise from all over the United States, from laboratories and from clinics, to, to bring together all the necessary understanding and, and effort to make this work. We were blown away by their passion and also their vision. Bringing the best people together in the country, uh, bringing the best laboratories in the country in the science and oncology field. So it wasn't just uh, raising money 
to say donate to some other entity's efforts. It was let's raise money and then let's take that money and have our own trial be funded with this. It's personalized medicine for people who, with late stage disease that have no other options. It's cutting edge science that nobody in the world is doing right now. And the entire thing is being funded by our little sport. Great volleyball coaches at every level know getting the best out of your team is only part of the equation. Each game is different. Each opponent is different. If you have any hope of winning, you must constantly monitor the game, study your opponent, look for weaknesses. Once you spot them, you attack. Rick and the Side Out team began to look at tumors that way. So with Side Out funding, some of the best and brightest minds in the field began their work in some of the most sophisticated labs in the country. They studied every aspect of the tumors, looking at genomic and protein information. Using the knowledge they built on the biology of the tumor, they came up with molecular profiling, sophisticated analysis, a game plan, if you will, so that doctors could use the best drug possible, some not even normally prescribed for breast cancer, to attack the individual tumors. The special part of, of Side Out is that we're doing a better job of matching a treatment uh, with the patient's particular cancer. Finding a, a, a molecule, a protein on the cell that is that cell's liability, it's Achilles heel, and then going after it with the right drug to accomplish that. So what this means for patients coming into these trials is, actually if I get a biopsy and have molecular profiling done, that that information allows my doctor to select rationally, not with a dart throw, but say, your tumor has this defect, I'm gonna pull this drug, I'm gonna match it to that, and it's making a difference clinically. So it provides hope. So this was how the Side Out One clinical study began. Tumors from 25 patients with metastatic breast cancer would be studied and analyzed. These were patients like Gloria, who'd run out of treatment options. Now they were being offered a sliver of hope. Dr. Nicholas Robert was involved in Side Out One. He says it didn't take long to locate an enthusiastic patient to sign up for the trial. Uh, she was a very dynamic, colorful, redhead, full of energy, uh, had a uh, zest for life. Gloria, as it were, was the first patient to be accrued in that trial. She came to me and she said, I just want you to get me 10 years. 10 years is what I want. The clinical trial Side Out One began, and it didn't take long before results started to show up in the labs and at the clinics. People without hope we're now living longer. The best part of it is when you get the results back and you see months and months uh, uh, in which those pa patients don't progress, in which we can control their therapy, the, the, their disease, uh, because we are giving them the right therapy. And that is really what uh, makes a difference in this work, because it's, it's amazing. <laughs> it was big. It was big. I still really didn't understand the, the impact of it all. Meet one of the patients who understood how big it was. She went through that first clinical trial, Side Out One. She asked us not to use her name because many people still don't know she has breast cancer. She said Side Out gave her hope. So that's the name she'd like to go by. Immediately we saw that it was, have, it was making a difference in stabilizing the growth of the tumors in my liver. Um, and that's the hardest place for any chemo drugs that I've taken to be effective. Um, and it lasted for nine months, which might not sound like a long time to somebody else, but for me, it's, you know, incredible. It's incredible. During the time I was on the Side Out trial, my son graduated law school and, and I got to be there. I mean, what a gift. So yeah, it, it, nine months is huge to me. Nine months is huge. We brought back together some of the key players from that team. They're no longer girls, they're women. Gosh, it's it's so weird to look back 10 years. I think that it it really it really is a miracle. It really is a magical thing. We didn't think that something that affected us so much and affected Gloria and um, her family so much could really be could have so much so much of an impact um, in the world. They touched my life in tremendous, tremendous, tremendous ways. We started the ripples and it became something so much bigger and it's amazing to have been a part of that. It's wonderful that 
something like that came from playing volleyball? There is nothing that means more to me than somebody giving me more days, more opportunities, more research. I think when people come together for a common goal, amazing things can happen. And my uncle suffered from cancer as well. Sorry. Um, and actually, my mom's friend uh, had breast cancer as well, and she was able to fight it off. So when you hear about people that survive, it's wonderful that they get more time. It's wonderful. Because at the end, all you want is time. I mean, I just don't know how to even thank them big enough. Um, I just don't know how to thank them big enough. Life is different from fairy tales. Cinderella stories always end. Players grow up and they go their separate ways. And sadly, lives end too. As a coach, Rick has learned to accept defeat gracefully. But the loss he felt in 2010 was just too raw, too difficult to accept. It's taken him four long years to make the short trip to Arlington National Cemetery. There's a reason he couldn't make this journey. I felt a little bit of, of disgrace or that I let her down in some way that she, you know, and, and, that, and that's what I was saying to her um, as I was standing by her bed. I just, I just said over and over again, I was like, I didn't get you that 10, I didn't get you that 10. That's, it seemed like a failure. So I felt a little bit, maybe that I wasn't worthy of coming out here just yet. Gloria Dunnett's lived a lot longer than most metastatic patients. The side out research helped her to live a good quality of life until her last days. She got three years of minimal symptoms before she passed away. Gloria's death has only fueled the side out foundation's passion to fulfill her dream for other metastatic patients. None of this cancer stuff is fair, and I wish his mom was living too, but through her and through what he wants to do to honor her, you know, my kids have their mom, and I mean, I know that's just my personal story, but lots of people have lots of people due to what they did, and what a, what a legacy to leave. I'm a competitive person. We, we want to succeed, and in my mind, we will. It's just a matter of when, and we're gonna keep pushing until we do. From the bottom of my heart, I cannot thank you enough. Those ladies deserve to have you here, so thank you. Okay, thank you. In my wildest dreams, I never dreamed that a volleyball group would, would help fund something that would find my particular tumor and what it needed. I mean, put those pieces together, that's mind boggling. Just playing volleyball can change lives. This could be a way that we change cancer care for the better forever. Kind of get emotional if you think about it. It'd be neat knowing that they did it and um, that we were part of it.